What's going on inside a black hole is one of the biggest mysteries of physics, if not of science overall. If physics was running for president, it'd say, nobody does mysteries better than me. Unlike most presidential candidates, it'd be simultaneously right, wrong, and completely missing the point. The worst part is that the question of what's inside a black hole might well be an entirely unsolvable problem. But in a new paper that just appeared, a group of physicists says they know what's going on. And it's much stranger than we thought. Their new idea is also an old idea, namely that when matter comes close to forming a black hole, it turns into something entirely different. It makes a phase transition, much like the transition from gas to liquid, but in this case the matter transitions into one big quantum state. This state, so the idea, generates a new type of internal pressure that will stabilize it just above the event horizon. The resulting object looks very much like a black hole, and the difference might be hard to tell by observations, but it doesn't have a horizon. Similar ideas have been proposed several times before and go under names such as fastballs or polymerization, or in this case, frozen stars. The nice thing about these ideas is that they solve a big problem with black holes that Stephen Hawking left us with, namely, how do black holes get their entropy? You see, we know that entropy can't decrease. So if we take something with high entropy, like all those old cables you're collecting in that box in your basement, and we throw that into a black hole, then the entropy of the black hole has to increase. But entropy is basically a measure of how many different ways you can arrange a system. There are lots of ways you can stuff your cables into the box, so it has a very high entropy. A black hole, however, is the simple possible object that you can imagine. It's a perfect sphere without any features. So how can it account for all those cables you've thrown in? Well, this is where the fastballs and strings enter. The idea says that black holes don't really exist. There's just this big quantum thing that can be built up in many different ways. And that gives you a very high entropy. The new thing about this paper is now that they calculate the probability for a collapsing ball of matter to transition into such a quantum state. They say that while the probability of it transitioning into any one particular state is very small, there are also a huge number of these states. And if you multiply both factors, that gives you a probability which is close to one, so it's a very likely thing to happen. Though I think that by this argument you could also get a probability that's larger than one. They don't say it in this paper, but in principle you should be able to tell apart such frozen stars from black holes with gravitational wave signals from black hole mergers. There have been a couple of claims that indeed something is off with some of those observations, but these anomalies have remained at very low statistical significance. All that sounds well and good. However, this idea of frozen stars or fastballs has a general problem. It's that to explain the black hole entropy, the transition to this fuzzy quantum state needs to work for all black holes. But black holes can form at arbitrarily low matter densities. This means the new phase transition needs to happen at densities that we can test in the laboratory and we haven't seen anything like that. You see, a black hole forms when its radius, that's the capital R, is below the Schwarzschild radius, that's 2mg, where m is the mass of the black hole and g is Newton's constant. Now let's say we want to know what's the mass density of matter at which a black hole of mass m forms. The mass density is mass divided by the volume, and the volume is the cube of the Schwarzschild radius times some constant. This means that the mass density is proportional to 1 over the square of the mass. So, the more massive the black hole, the larger its radius, but the smaller the density needs to be at which it forms. Indeed, the density can become arbitrarily small. A supermassive black hole, for example, that has a mass of about a billion times of our sun, will form at a matter density somewhat smaller than that of water. I did this because someone recently asked me for more numbers. 
I hope this won't scare off too many viewers. By the way, this video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you remember. What all this means is that for the frozen star idea to work, this phase transition must depend not just on the matter density, but also on how much this stuff is distributed over potentially billions of kilometers. It's an intrinsically non-local idea. And no, this is not the normal quantum non-locality. This would require an entirely new type of non-locality. And we have no evidence for this type of new physics whatsoever. Basically, I think that frozen stars and fastball and similar ideas are solving one problem by creating a much bigger one. It's like fixing a leaking tap by flooding the house. It kind of works, but would you pay the guy who did it? So I'm not saying it's necessarily wrong, but personally I don't believe this stuff for a second. But whatever you think is inside a black hole, remember in space no one can hear you curse the maths. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. Brilliant.org offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Some even have executable Python scripts or videos with little demonstration experiments. Whether you want to know more about large language models or quantum computing, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. Sounds good. I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.